Hi, this is Mike, and I'm a graduate teaching assistant in the English department at Clemson University. And I want to share a piece of software with you today that I think is extremely useful, and it's called Free Mind. I've used this program for my own uh, writing projects. I have students right now that uh, are using this program, and I have one student that occasionally uses Free Mind to take notes um, in class as opposed to using Microsoft Word. So it's uh, quite a versatile program, and it's not for everyone, but it's worth, uh, it's worth sharing it, as it can be easily incorporated into a lot of your own writing projects. So I would highly recommend that you try and share this with your students. For those that are strong visual learners, this might be a good way for them to conceptualize some of their papers, take notes, brainstorm um, in particular. It's very flexible in that sense. And it is Java-based. So you can actually run this on your Mac, PC, Linux, and edit files between all of these different systems as it is cross-platform. Uh, like I said, it's Java-based, so that's really, really awesome. Now let's talk about the workspace here. Let's go ahead and start a new mind map by pressing the new the blank sheet there, or you can do File, New. Uh, on your left you have icons that you can insert into your mind map. The trash can will actually delete them all the X will remove the most recent icon that you've inserted. And essentially these icons are just little visual cues and reminders you can put in your mind map. Uh, I don't know if there's something really important that you want to share with someone if you send your mind map to them or if there's, for example, you can put this bomb in if you think it's a bad idea. Um, at the top, it's very similar to other interfaces you've used in that you can uh, print, save, copy, cut, paste, and, and so forth. Change your typeface, the zoom level, and uh, the size of your typeface as well. So let's go ahead and make a mind map real quickly. I'll show you how it works. Uh, you have a default bubble in the middle that's called new mind map. Let's go ahead and set a mind map up as though we are composition students who are working on the, let's say, final group project. So there we go. And although you can use this mind mapping software to outline a paper or a project, we're going to use it today to divvy up the tasks of our group. So we have it selected, the main bubble. We're going to press Tab, and we've inserted a branch. Click on it again, press Tab another branch, tab, tab. So now we have four branches. And just my personal preference is I like the bubbles, so I'm going to select all using Apple A or Control A and format everything in a bubble form. Um, so let's go ahead and set this up. We'll have uh, team member one here. We'll hover over this one insert an icon for team number two, team number three, and team number four. And let's give them each a few tasks. So we'll hover over this and do tab once again. And team number one will be responsible for games and food. Team number two will be responsible for movies and the PlayStation. Team member three will be responsible for bringing the crossbow and the wiffle ball bat. And team member four will bring a dictionary. Sorry, I can't type today. A dictionary, blank DVDs, and he'll be also responsible for establishing world peace. Uh, you know that's good. Let's highlight that and let's put a smiley face there because that seems like a good idea to me. The crossbow also seems like a good idea. Food, I think we should put a penguin there. And for the PlayStation, let's go ahead and put a flag there because that's of great importance. So you see how we can just add these nodes by pressing tab. By the way, you can also press return to make what's called a sibling node. As you see, we press return 
It's on the same level as these. That's called a sibling node. Uh, we'll just delete that though. Or tab. Tab or return to make these nodes. And uh, you can also click on the background anywhere and you can drag and move your map around. Sometimes these maps become pretty large and unwieldy. So you can drag and change your view. Um, you can also click on these to contract them if you have too much stuff going on. Likewise, you can click up here. to expand and contract your map as well. Um, another key thing is that you can highlight one of these nodes and you can go to insert and you can insert a hyperlink to a web page for instance. You could actually insert a picture. Um, so if you're doing a visual rhetoric paper you could set up a bunch of different paragraphs. You could outline your paper paragraph by paragraph and you could actually insert the pictures that you intend on using with those paragraphs to see how it works together as a grouping, um, which is just, uh, just brilliant, I think. And another thing that I think makes this particularly powerful is, as opposed to actually drawing these, this bubble map on paper, you can move information around just by dragging and dropping. So say, for instance, team member four has to drop out of school. He had some sort of industrial accident at his night job. Um, Hard-working student just trying to work his way through school. He's going to have to delay that for a couple years it seems. So all we can do is adapt, right? So we'll take world peace and click on it, drag it to team member two. Well, team member two will have to establish world peace now. Team member three uh, is going to have to get a dictionary. Team member one is going to be responsible for games, food, and blank DVDs. Team member four will hover over, press delete, because team member four is gone. And you see how easy it is to manipulate this information. In fact, we can take team member three and actually make team, team member three, uh, we could put him under the control of team member two, who's uh, starting to dominate this entire project. And then we can put team member one under team member two as well so that team member two is the complete authority for everything that takes place in this group project uh, which tends to happen doesn't it and we've set up a mind map although it is a strange mind map um, and we can just move this back here if we don't like that team member three could secede if we want him to so we have a mind map now and uh, another key feature here for, in this program is that you can export your mind map in um, as a web page form, as HTML. You just go up to File, Export. Uh, you can export it as HTML, as a PDF, as a, a SVG, PNG, or JPEG. These are image files. And you can actually upload these and make a web page. So let's go ahead. I'll show you how this export function works. Let's make uh, an HTML file. I guess we have to save it first. Sorry about that. Save it to the desktop. We'll call this sample. Okay, now we'll try exporting it again. And here you go. You have it exported in kind of a rough outline. Now, what is particularly handy is you can export this with a the JavaScript that will enable you to embed your mind map on a web page. And uh, visitors to your web page can then explore it. They can drill down on the data. They can collapse it and expand it and visit the links that you've set up in your web page, your brainstorm. You can share this web page with the world, with teammates, and um, they would not be able to edit it, of course, but it's just pretty neat. You'd have to get a, an accompanying um, applet to do that. If you don't like that, you can also embed it into a web page as a simple, expandable, contractable outline. Or you could go to File, Export, Export as a PDF. And if you'll allow me to just uh, open up that PDF here real quickly. There you 
there you go. It, it actually, it automatically crops it, you see, based on what you're doing. Um, so it's a very powerful program. It can do a lot more, actually. There are a lot of ways you can customize these maps. You can change the outlines. Uh, you can change these various branches. The boldness, we can change the typeface here, make it bold, make it a larger font. And uh, that is all I have for you right now. So give it a look, um, see what you think, and thank you for watching my tutorial.